question of the day is, do you agree with Kirk Herbstreet? Kirk Herbstreet's statement yesterday on the Pat McAfee show was, get on the Chicago Bears right now, that they look like the Lions of a few years ago. And that was a Lions team that the Bears beat by two touchdowns and should have won the previous game by two touchdowns. And that was a team that should have been in the Super Bowl last season. So what do the Bears look like? And are you excited? Let me show you what uh, Kirk Herbstreet said. Now, if you like this content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, and the bell to be notified of future content. And uh, uh, let's kick it off. So this is from Kirk Herbstreet. Okay, how much have you been working on that? Is that already done, hay in the barn, or are we still, yeah? Yeah, a lot. We're still banging around on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's uh, something that, you know, it, it's tedious work, but I enjoy it because once. God damn it, it's the wrong one. Uh, of course. Uh, what I was talking about was, let me rephrase that. Let's try that one more time. Uh, they got a lot one. better on the defensive side. Sweat. When Sweat came over. And the secondary got healthy. I'm telling you, everybody expected Ibraflus to get let go middle of the year. The guy had an energy about him. His team responds to him. You better get on the Bears right now. You better get on oh, the Bears. The Bears wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, by low. And I'm not a Bears guy. I don't, give a, I don't know anything about I don't care about the Bears. I'm just saying they are the Detroit Lions from a couple years. Like, Was Kirk just about to say, I don't give a shit about the Chicago Bears? How dare he? They're coming. Uh, uh, the, the Bears are coming. Like Get ready. The only issue is the Lions are in their division, and so are the Packers. That's right. And so are the Vikings. That's right. NFC North. Great I, division. Yeah, it's yep. all of a sudden become that. So there you have it. Uh, <laughs> Kirk Herbstreet. Uh, Herbie, if you will, a big fan of what the Chicago Bears are doing, and what they've done so far. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Uh, Kirk Herbstreet, absolutely uh, right, 100%. Uh, and there's some messages out here. We've got a new section that we're going to do. It's going to be Twitter. Uh, we're going to call it X. I don't know. Maybe we'll do something like X going to give it to you or something like that. Isn't that guy dead now? Didn't he pass away a few years ago? I'm not sure. But uh, it, it looks like this is a, a an incredible moment, uh, especially when you get these kind of guys, Pat McAfee uh, coming out, along with um, uh, Kirk Herbstreet coming out, talking about the Chicago Bears, letting you know what they think. And what they think is that the Bears are going to do something big or they're going to have a very big season. So um, and in, in addition to coming along with that is an article that just popped up that Matt Eberflus and the Chicago Bears are coming to take the NFC North. Uh, they're coming to take it away, if you will. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> the funny thing about this is um, the Bears have now split off their staff into different teams uh, to debate who is the target at number nine. And who do you guys think is the target at number nine? That's going to be the question of the day, I think, because we've got uh, we've got wide receiver that seems to be a, a, a a level of need. Uh, we've got Jay Grizz in the house. Um, best team in the NFC. I'm, well, you know what? I don't know if we're the best team on paper yet. I think that really kind of, I think we have to see how this draft flushes out. And by the way, I had a draft where I didn't trade anything and I did it just based on, um, you know, just let's just go for it, see what happens. And what ended up happening was I thought, I think I had a really good draft. Uh, however, the Bears, who do you think uh, they're going to pick at the number nine? Do you think they're going to trade down? I mean, that's going to be the, one of the questions. Um, do the Bears take Roma Dunzi, who should be or potentially could be available? Do they take a defensive end, an edge rushing specialist like Dallas Turner or Luatu Latu? Or what if Joe Alt is available at the number nine selection? Some that everybody has to remember about the way this, this, this draft seems to be going is Jaden Daniels is falling. J.J. McCarthy is coming up. So we're starting to see over half of the NFL saying that they prefer J.J. McCarthy over Jaden Daniels. And those are those are inside, and we don't know the accuracy of those, but 
uh, we are hearing NFL insiders saying repeatedly that they think that um, that they think that that JJ McCarthy uh, is better than Jaden Daniels now, and that's not whether it's not really a competition between those two guys, uh, and and certainly not for the Bears. We don't really care. What we care about is uh, draft position now. If that, remember, J.J. McCarthy was about the 15th best player in this draft. If he's up higher right now than Jaden Daniels on a lot of these charts, then that would mean that Jaden uh, Jaden Daniels probably still goes in that top eight and that J.J. McCarthy now goes probably in that top eight. So what ends up happening here is you have us taking Caleb Williams at number one. You have Drake May potentially going at number two. You have J.J. McCarthy uh, maybe going at number three now. <clears throat> then you have uh, Marvin Harrison probably at four or five if the Arizona Cardinals decide to move on from Kyler Murray uh, and they take Jaden Daniels. Then you have uh, uh, Marvin Harrison dropping down to number five. And then you still have Olu Fashanu. You have a lot of different talent that's still sitting out there that really starts to fall down on this list to the Chicago Bears. So J.J. McCarthy having a good run right now and having a good um, evaluation, if you will, that's been great for the Chicago Bears because that provides us with more options at that number nine selection. And by the way, uh, in my draft today, I only took four picks. I, I went with it one more time, see if I could run it back and how I could do in that context. And I think that it went pretty well. So I wonder now, and what do you what do you guys think that the Chicago Bears are doing with that, uh, you know, what are what are the who are the players? I mean, you Joe Alt, you've got Malik Neighbors, you've got Roma Dunsey, you've got Dallas Turner. Um, you know, there, there's a there's quite a bit of potential players in that range. Uh, you know, matter of fact, let's pull this up. You can see the first round draft picks, and this is what it looks like. So, in my draft, I took Caleb Williams at number one. Spoiler alert, by the way, uh, I took Caleb Williams at number one, then Drake May, then Jaden Daniels, and then. Uh, Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunsey, Malik Neighbors, Olu Fashanu, and then Dallas Turner. Now, at this point, let's take this and just kind of look at it, and let's just say J.J. McCarthy now is pumping himself up into that top eight discussion. So do the Chargers need a quarterback? Probably not. They're not going to move on from uh, – they're not, they're not going to move on from Justin Herbert. Uh, Malik Neighbors to to the New York Giants. Are the New York Giants going to uh, really go with Tommy DeVito? I mean, is that what's going to happen? Um, and, and maybe not. You know, maybe Joe Mc, maybe that's where J.J. McCarthy fits in. Uh, again, Arizona might move on J.J. McCarthy as well. Uh, then you have uh, the Tennessee Titans. Are they happy? Uh, the Atlanta Falcons. Are they happy? Um, I mean, and by the way, when, when I say the, the Atlanta Falcons, I mean, they did pick up Kirk cousins, but how many years does he have left? One, two, you know, he's not going to be there for a long time. They're going to need a quarterback. So are they motivated to get JJ McCarthy as their quarterback of the future and allow him to groom himself under what is arguably one of the best free agent, uh, uh, guys in Kirk Cousins. I mean, you know, Kirk Cousins might not be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but he's a solid individual. He makes pretty smart plays. He would be a good guy for another quarterback uh, to learn from. So uh, they might be motivated. And then that, of course, leaves at number nine, Joe Alt. Now, if you if you continue to move down the, the list here, you can see that, you know, Talise Fuaga was available. J.C. Latham was available. Jared Verse was still available. Brock Bowers moved down to number 15. There are some wild opportunities for selections here now that this market has started to turn a little bit. Terion Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, um, uh, Luatu Latu, Brian Thomas Jr. You have Jackson Powers Johnson still on the board. Uh, you know, there's a lot of really good players that are still showing up that you can pick up at this spot. So it's a really, this is a really interesting uh, number nine selection. So uh, shout out to uh, Chicago Bears uh, for having all of these options. Number one and number nine pick. This is going to be a fantastic draft. That's Chicago Bears. Look, I'm telling you right now, Kirk Herbstreit is right. Uh, th- this team is going to end up being something fantastic by the time that this is done. Now, the article in itself from NBC Chicago uh, it says, I like the numbers in terms of the talented players that we can get at nine. Um, we're going to do some cool things when we get back, kind of break into teams. One team is going to talk about the tackle position uh, and why it's best to go after it and why the receivers are the best and why the defensive ends are the best. So, And then they're going to have a debate on what is the more impactful 
uh, short term and long term for the football team. So, you know, specifically, the Bears are going after the tackle position, the receiver position, and the defensive end position. So, um, and and I think the fact that he said tackle position first probably means that if Joe Alt is available or Olu Fashanu is available at that number nine position, I bet that's probably who they're going for. And then receiver. Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunsey, most probably available, one or the other available at that level. And then uh, the defensive end position. And then we also have to consider Gerald Everett's on a one-year contract. So there is a possibility that if you could pick up a Brock Bowers, uh, then you start running a two, you start running three tight end sets and, uh, you know, things change dramatically on what it is that you're, you're doing. So uh, you might just have to adjust on the fly if that's available and if things work out that way. Um, and now uh, polls did leave the door open to trading down the number nine in addition to making a pick in that spot. So they'll have to see what the teams in front of them do in addition to com- completing their in-house work before things get underway in Detroit this month. So, you know, we don't have much time left and the Bears are broke up into teams trying to figure out exactly what it is that they're going to do. Now, in the meantime, uh, how do the Bears rate against the NFC North through free agency. Now, we've got an article here from Gene Chamberlain uh, in which he talks about um, how well uh, each one of these teams do. And it says that um, uh, the Bears have built a solid base through true drafts and filled in during free agency in various degrees of success. Nothing exists in a vacuum. While Poles has used free agency to try and cover most areas, especially except possibly one, the rest of the NSC North has been at work. The Bears and Vikings had the most ground to make up in free agency and tried by changing the most important positions. The changes made were comparable as the Bears have gone from a runner who passes in Justin Fields to most likely a passer who can run in Caleb Williams. The Vikings have gone from seasoned veteran Kirk Cousins to a rookie or Sam Darnold. Uh, They both got more work to do to catch up to the Lions and Packers. However, we're beating the Lions. We're, we're, We're going to beat the Lions both games this year. Uh, how, here's how the division came out of the 2024 free agency. The Vikings uh, let go of Kirk Cousins. They signed Sam Darnold uh, to be the bridge option. Um, they uh, replaced Daniel Hunter, uh, DJ Wanham, Jordan Hicks with John Grenard, Andrew Van Ginkle, and Blake Cashman. I like both of those. John Grenard and Blake Cashman are pretty good pickups. They also added Aaron Jones and Shaquille Griffin to fill holes in the starting lineup. Uh, defensive corner, defensive tackle and cornerback are their most obvious non-quarterback needs. If they don't trade up, they could stay put at 11 and 23 and look at Michael Penix or Bo Nix and have an edge rusher at that level. Uh, John Grenard, by the way, edge rusher. So would have been a great get for the, for the bears, in my opinion. Uh, not just saying that because he's from Louisville and played for the university of Louisville. I'm not saying it for that reason, but I am saying it for that reason. Uh, Detroit Lions, in the meantime, uh, they had to address their defense. Uh, They traded for cornerback Carlton Davis and signed Amik Robinson, uh, which upgraded their secondary. Um, And uh, DJ Reader and Marcus Davenport uh, came in for the defensive line. And um, we'll have to see, you know, maybe this looks like a, a, a kind of a sideways lateral move. Green Bay made two big splashes with Xavier McKinney at safety and running back Josh Jacobs. Uh, that didn't really change too much about them. At offensive tackles, they parted ways with David Bakhtar- Bakhtiari, uh, who missed most of last season following the fourth and fifth surgeries on a knee sustained uh, from an injury in d- the 2020. Plus, they lost Yash Nijman in free agency. Uh, they need to add a talented backup behind left tackle Rashid Walker and standout right tackle Zach Thomas. At guard, John Runyon left in free agency, leaving open only one backup for the interior Trio. So uh, at linebacker, they're transitioning to a 4 3 scheme and released former All Pro Devondre Campbell. Uh, so there. Uh, I think the, the the Green Bay Packers did what they had to do uh, to be competitive. And of course, you know, until we start beating the Packers, we're not competitive with them. So uh, hopefully this is going to be a better situation. Now, considering all the salary cap space the Bears had, they disappointed by not meeting their biggest need while focusing on lesser needs or depth. It's the second straight year that they did this. They need to address those big needs in the draft. But when they do, it might take time for them to realize dividend. Uh, it's true they needed another safety and depth there and address this adequately by signing Kevin Byard and Jonathan Owens. Uh, and then that replaces Eddie Jackson, of course. They needed another running back after deciding on Deonta Foreman not being the future. So they signed DeAndre Swift. Uh, they didn't they, they didn't sign Keenan Allen, but they did trade for him. And they made sure that they had an experienced second receiver to help rookie Caleb Williams. 
Uh, it's debatable whether either center candidate they signed are the answer at a weak spot, but it is an improvement over Lucas Patrick and Dan Feeney uh, in Ryan Bates or Coleman Shelton. Uh, the first need that Eberflus talked about during the offseason was an edge rusher to divert pressure from Montez Sweat, and they're going into the draft without one, and the only person that they signed was journeyman Jake Martin. Uh, starting three technique tackle Justin Jones left, and the immediate replacement is Gervon Dexter, who's still unproven but improving. Uh, and then for the second straight season, it would appear the defensive line has been neglected and must come in the draft. So um, – what do you think? I mean, is that is that right? Is that guy right? He says that he, you know, it, to me, it sounds like he doesn't like what the Chicago Bears have done, and that there are a lot of holes still left to fill. And if there are, and by the way, that that would be fair if there are some holes to fill. Every team has holes to fill. The places that we've we've struggled the most uh, were wide receiver, which we've upgraded the wide receiver position. Uh, center, we've upgraded the center position. Do we still have a weak left tackle? I'm going to disagree with that, but I'm going to understand why if Joe Alt is available at that nine pick, you would want to go with him because, you know, you've got something that is basically a slam dunk or as close as it gets to a slam dunk uh, other than Marvin Harrison in this draft. So, um, I, there has to be that one guy, I think, in that uh, defense that that is a game changer. And, you know, maybe we don't have them and maybe we don't even get them in the draft. And here's the thing that you have to consider. Are we just a great running team? And if we're just a great run, if we're a great run stopping team on that defensive line and we don't get a whole lot of pressure, how good is our secondary? Can our secondary give a guy like Demarcus Walker, not a great pass rusher, but he still gets sacks? Right. Can he can can our secondary have improved enough with Jalen Johnson? Look, Jalen Johnson got his contract, but he's also playing for a future contract. You have to remember, he didn't get a five year. He got a four year because he wants to test the market again and he wants to do it early. So he took a little bit of a home team discount to do it. <clears throat> so he's incentivized to continue playing well. And if he's incentivized, remember, Eddie Jackson fell apart when he got a big contract. Uh, Jalen Johnson, when he gets a big contract, might not be the same. And if he's not and he makes the plays and he continues to improve at his position, he continues to be that island, then Tyreek Stevenson probably only gets better. Terrell Smith, uh, Kyler Gordon, they're all going to just get better. Uh, they're still very, it's a very, very young secondary. And then you have Kevin Byer, basically the old guard at this point, and Jaquan Brisker, this team, if they can improve just a bit in the way that they cover. And if, you know, to be fair, if Tremaine Edmonds, uh, Jack Sanborn, and uh, TJ Edwards, if they were decent, uh, if they were decent, if they're decent, then that takes out the tight ends. This could be one of those situations in which we start to see that step forward. Now, Lord Crimson brings up uh, an, an important point here. I was expecting our secondary to be great last year, and they absolutely disappointed against good teams. And yes, they did, but they did that early on. Good teams would be somebody like. Uh, Detroit. They shut down Detroit. Um, a good team would be um, Green Bay, and Green Bay scored 17 points. It's not. It's not. I think the defense. Again, the defense was number one in the last six games. I want to say eight games, but you know, I think they were number two or three at that period. But in the last six games, the Bears were the number one defense in the league in many different categories, including points per game. So it stands to reason that the Chicago Bears are on the right track. We just didn't get the virtue of seeing it all because look, we gave up a ton of points early on in the season and that matters, but we should be looking at what happened at the end. And I think that this is an improved team. And and by the way, uh, yes, Lord Crimson, it's, pa it's the pass rush. I mean, there's obvious need at the pass rush position, but here's the thing. If you can just consider at this point, if you can just consider at this point that, you know, Green Bay is going to be a tough out no matter what, because we aren't built for Green Bay, then that's 15 and two, you know, and I'm, I'm not willing, I'm willing to admit, it, I don't like Green Bay, Green Bay, but you know, there's, um, uh, well, no, see, after Sweat got here, uh, we still lost 17 to nine and they didn't have to punt. I mean, that was, that was uh, Lord Crimson's point. Um, that's, that's kind of bad, you know? 17 to nine is what you lose by. I mean, you really are within a touchdown and a two point conversion of getting there, but at no point did it feel like the Chicago, that the Chicago bears were threatening green Bay. You know, you, you, you just didn't feel it. And again, you know, you can make, you can, you can have problems with the fact that, you know, and it is truthful to say that 
Uh, the Bears were probably underserved by the coaching staff. Luke Getzey only threw the ball 10 times from the second quarter into the fourth quarter after uh, Justin Fields going six for six. That's kind of a bad, that's a bad look right there. Uh, you're obviously, you don't have, you don't have trust in your quarterback to do anything but run the ball. So that's kind of, you know, you, you, you made a difficult situation there, but here we are. And the defense did not stop them. I mean, that's what I think is is kind of important there. Um, so it would require that this team get better. You know, it, it would require it. Uh, that secondary, you, you can't have And By the way, Green Bay, I want to say this. Green Bay represents a very weird option. Uh, Green Bay is four wide receivers deep, which is very difficult. And a and they've got that tight end. So uh, And uh, they had, uh, what's the guy, Aaron, whatever his name is, coming out of the background, a good uh, and, and he's a good guy for um, screen passes. So you know they have a they have six deep in their receivers totally. So it's a very different dynamic than many other teams have. And it was built around Aaron Rodgers. It still hasn't been completely dismantled uh, for Jordan Love. So he's getting the benefit of this you know really wild sort of um, uh, scheme and. Is good for them. But, you know, here's the thing. If we can just get a little bit of pressure in the in the secondary, then maybe that allows the line a little bit more time to, to make some plays. So we'll see whether or not they improve. I, I still stand by the Bears are going to be a much improved team by virtue of having this extra time and experience, this extra time. Uh, now, they will be learning a little bit of new coaching, but Matt Eberflus is still calling the plays, so I think that the the, the defense is going to still be behind Matt Eberflus. I don't think he's lost that team in any way. They play hard for him. Uh, and then the offense, I mean, I think the offense can be a little bit more dynamic. You know, if the offense can put up seven more points a game, this is an entirely different this is an entirely different year. I mean, that's it. It's an entirely different year. If you just kind of play out all of those pieces, then this is a big, big upgrade. Overall, even though we don't really feel it and like we're not manifesting it at this point, like we're really just kind of sitting back speculating. But I think when we start to see this on the field, when we start to see uh, this, do we have an eye for detail? That's going to be the question to ask of the coaching staff. And I think that this staff, better than the last staff, is going to have an eye for detail that we didn't see. Uh, you know, we had, uh, uh, what was that guy, Daniel, Daniel, whatever his name was, Lewis, that we had as the defensive coordinator last year, they're getting, getting fired for whatever reason we don't know. And the running back coach that got fired for whatever reason we don't know. Uh, wild, by the way, somebody should send a FOIA in for that and try to figure out why these two guys were terminated. Uh, it's certainly, I would certainly be interested to see what the reasoning was behind that. But the important thing is those levels of detail. Uh, for running backs, the levels of detail, Allen Williams, there you go. The level of detail here for the defense, uh, was it gone? Did it, did it, um, you know, did it get destroyed by that, uh, by that move, by that lack of having a defensive coordinator, or was it improved by Eberflus taking everything over? You know, I don't know the answer to that, but I think that we're going to find out pretty rapidly that it, the, that team could have been a lot better. And if you remember, I mean, clearly this team was not ready for the season in 2023. They started off and they were horrible. Uh, you know, uh, Green Bay just annihilated us. You know, it was not a great start. And then Kansas City, um, uh, you know, and, and then we lose to Denver. It was just, it was, you know, it was an amazing moment of how can the Bears actually be this bad? They were just not ready to compete. Are we going to be ready to compete this year? If we're ready to compete, this is an entirely different team. This is a team that's going to continue getting better because it's still very young. And, you know, Caleb Williams will go through some growing pains in a couple of games. We'll experience that if he starts at the beginning of the season. He'll go through some growing pains at the beginning of the season. I think they want to get him in as quickly as possible and get him acclimated to it. You know, if he's ready, then they're going to put him on the field and we're going to see what he's got. But um, can he continue to get better? Can he continue to get better? And, uh, you know, that's where it comes down to. And then uh, Lord Crimson brings up an important point, but he's missing, in my opinion, one important fact. Uh, they did not look abysmal against Detroit. They beat the tar out of Detroit the second time they faced them. And in the first time, they really should have won. There was a collapse. We should be able to admit that there is a collapse, and we should recognize that there was a collapse in the defense, but we also did not have a quarterback who was making it happen. You have to remember, and, and we can go back to play calling or whatever it was, but you know, we didn't have, uh, we did not 
score when we needed to score in order to keep it out of range. I mean, football is very simple. You just have to score points, you know? You just have to score points, and you have to win a couple of and, – and by the way, the other team can score. It's just how much you can stop them from scoring touchdowns. If they score a couple of field goals, and if they score one touchdown, you know, three field goals, then you're looking at a team that scores 16 points, right? And you should be able to score 20, 21 points. You should be able to get three touchdowns per game, uh, or in Justin Fields' case, two touchdowns, and then get two field goals, and you win the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's very simple here. It very, very simple. And, you know, really they allowed two, they allowed two touchdowns is what happened. And then they kicked the ball out. of. Uh, and then remember, um, uh, what's the name? Tevin Jenkins kicked the ball out of the end zone because they were going to fall on it. And that ended up being a safety. So, uh, but, but, you know, I mean, that's, you consider this team is much better. I think we're going to find out this team is, is way, way, way better than what we think it is. Uh, but let's move on. Uh, we got a couple more here. Uh, there's three obvious Chicago Bears NFL uh, draft. Um, th this is uh, uh, just a weird sort of uh, draft predictions. Um, and the first prediction, um, hold on one second here. And by the way, uh, it was uh, um, there, there. This was a wild sort of article here. It was from Bears Goggles on uh, the first prediction was that the Bears will not draft a defensive tackle with the ninth overall. Uh, and and as the French say, uh, no shit. Like, there, why would you? There is no defensive tackle other than Johnny Newton that even clocks in at that range or at that level. So yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, prediction number one is going to be real. Uh, you have uh, no opportunity there uh, for a, a, def a defensive tackle being drafted. Number two, uh, the Bears pick who draft experts least expect. Now, here's what they're saying. Uh, the ninth overall picture, uh, ninth overall pick uh, should be remembered as um, should be remembered by last year's first round pick Darnell Wright. Uh, most mock drafts had Darnell Wright going in the teens. He was a late draft riser, but was never thought of as a second tackle to be off the board. This leads me to a prospect that nobody is talking about, the Chicago Bears. The obvious choices are Joe Alt, Roma Dunsey, and Dallas Turner. However, assuming these three players are drafted before the Bears, then a few prospects need to be considered. Those players are Brock Bowers, Brian Thompson Jr., and Jackson Powers Johnson. Brock Bowers start hasn't been good as he hasn't been able to recover from his injuries to show off his ability uh, at the Combine or the Georgia Pro Day. As I called for Chase Claypool, Brock Bowers is a weapon. Claypool was a miss because of his attitude, not his talent. Brock Bowers isn't a tight end. He is a weapon. Jackson Powers Johnson would be the Darnell Wright of this draft class. Maybe would call Many would call it too soon, but on the field, he would show that he deserves to be selected and could become one of the better centers in football. Did the Bears bring in two centers? Yes, but the $1.75 million for Coleman... Uh, Shelton isn't anything special, and Ryan Bates is in his fifth year pick, is a fifth round pick for the Bears. Uh, and uh, if Darnell Wright earned a job, so could maybe Jackson Powers Johnson. So I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem with that idea. But the other thing is, they're not going to get any more weapons. The flashy choice for the Chicago Bears at the ninth selection could be Brian Thomas Jr., um, who is the best receiver in the NFL, uh, and who said. Uh, to keep drafting receivers in that 2020 draft class because it's stacked. I didn't expect just Jordan Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, sorry, to become the best receiver in the league, but I expected him to become a good one. Uh, I believe I said he would become an Alshon Jeffrey like player. Boy, was I wrong, but the league was as well. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. is a stud. Picture Chris Johnson as a six foot three receiver. This is my best comparison. Thomas is a slimmer version of DK Metcalf and Josh Gordon. Uh, Thomas loves blocking, according to his interviews, and has shown on tape that he's willing. Uh, he's a willing run blocker. Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles love pass blocking receivers. Imagine having a receivers coach who worked with Keenan Allen, Allen himself, and DJ Moore, teaching Thomas all of the tricks they have. Uh, Jackson Smith and the Jigba uh, is a and his trio of receivers with Shane Waldron were great, but this would be even better. So um, there is some potential and some possibility here that that you take Brian Thomas. And uh, uh, we'll see. I don't like that. I, I don't like these. 
uh, these these predictions, by the way, I, like I don't think that any of them kind of resonated with me. But I mean, it's somebody's somebody's going for it. You know what I mean? So um, but let's move on. We got one more here. Uh, and, and this one's going to be uh, Shrock. Um, um, we've got another Shrock um, uh, mock draft. So we're going to go over this with number one being Caleb Williams being taken as the first overall pick. Uh, and then he's going to trade. For the Steelers, the Steelers are going to uh, trade the number nine pick, and the Bears will pick up number 21, number 51, and a 2025 third-round pick. And uh, at the moment, I don't see any of the big three, Odunzi, Alt, or Neighbors, sliding to nine. Odunzi is the most likely to still be there, and if he is, the Bears should turn the card in for an elite Washington receiver. But with those three gone, Poles fields some offers and winds up making another deal with the Steelers uh, in order to... Uh, allow the Steelers to reach up and grab Olu Fashanu. Uh, then in round one at number 21, that's where the Bears go reach for Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU. Six foot three, 209, 433 at the combine, 38 and a half vertical. He's great at uncovering on quick routes underneath and excels at separating vertically. He's still raw as a route runner, but has the inside outside versatility to pair with Keenan uh, and DJ Moore. Uh, and then on day two, uh, Bears would trade up from the 75 to the number 52 and number 83 overall. With the number 51, they take Marshawn Nealon, defensive end out of Western Michigan. Um, Nealon has the size, speed, and power the Bears look for in defensive end. The Western Michigan Project ran a 4.7540 and posted a 35-inch vertical at the combine while measuring 6'3", 267. He'll be a nice cog opposite Sweat and fills a hole that is vacated by Ngakwe who is still a free agent. By the way, I do think they're actually going to bring in Ngakwe at a, at a league minimum. I don't think that they're going to do this. Uh, th this is my opinion. Uh, and, and by the way, I think Yannick Ngakwe had his worst season ever, but it was because of injuries and it was not because, you know, it was because of injuries and because he was able to be double teamed a lot more. I, I don't think that he had the tools to succeed. And, and I want to say that if you go back and you look at the two games before he got injured, I think you were starting to see Yannick Ngakwe rounding out into really good form. I believe he had two sacks in the game that he got injured. Um, oh, it may have been one and a half sack. He may have shared one, but Montez Sweat has changed the dynamic of that team to a level in which Yannick Ngakwe, if we can get him on a league minimum, that becomes the guy that I would prefer to see over Demarcus Walker. Uh, and again, th these guys would be rotating in and out on run and pass plays, obvious plays that is. So, um, uh, you know, I really like that idea over Marshawn Nealon. However, um, any kind of defensive end that can do some pass rushing, I'm good with. In the second round at number 52, Brandon Dorless, defensive tackle out of Oregon. Dorless is an athletic defensive lineman who can line up on the edge and play three technique. He'll need to put on a little weight to play inside consistently, but he has excellent hands and quick feet, posted a relative score of 908 out of 10 due to a 4.8540 and a 9-foot, 3-inch broad jump. He has the physicality to set the edge against the run and the quickness to penetrate from the interior. He could be a unique defensive chess piece for head coach Matt Eberflus. Uh, I do think that we need a defensive tackle. I would pr probably look for somebody a little bit later on in the draft, but, you know, I don't have a problem with this one at all. Uh, and then another trade, Bears received number 71. The Cardinals uh, received number 83. So we're trading up again. Uh, so he's trading up a number one to get J Javon Baker, wide receiver out of UCF. Uh, the Bears still, last season at UCF, he posted 3.21 yards per route run, a stat used to measure how good a receiver is at turning his on-field opportunities into production. That number ranks eighth among receivers with at least 80 targets uh, per pro, pro, pro Pro football focus, neighbors Harrison Jr., Troy Franklin, and Missouri sophomore star Luther Burden were among the names Baker trailed. Baker was also posted a better than 50% contested catch rate in each of his college seasons. So there's a very good opportunity. This guy might be pretty good. Um, so Javon Baker, um, we'll, we'll keep him on the radar, if you will. So that completes their draft. And uh, one, two, three, uh, four, five selections. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I like, I, I, I like mine better, but you know, Shrock had a, this is actually a decent mock draft uh, from him. And there's been a lot of them that I do not like. Uh, so now uh, we're going to have a new segment here called X going to give it to you where, <laughs> um, where you get a little bit of detail, a little bit of inside information. Um, uh, and we'll see, you know, how this plays out. Okay. Uh, so number one, 
The Chicago Bears will host Tulane wide receiver Jaquan Jackson on a 30 visit, a source said. Dynamic and explosive wideout has also received heavy interest from the Lions, Eagles, Cardinals, among others, during the pre-draft process. Um, and I, I don't I don't know where he ranks, but look, you have the one pick, you have the nine pick, you have the 75 pick, and you have the 122. So I'm going to assume that he's going to fall later on in this draft, but they are going to host him. That's according to Ryan Fowler, ESPN. Also, this is coming, and guys, I want to take a moment here, and um, I'm going to play this for you because we're going to uh, – I, I, I think that it's important that you guys – hear it from the man himself um and and some of you you know you may not like um uh you, you, you may not like him but um it, it doesn't matter he's uh he's got an opinion here and Caleb Williams is about to give you his opinion uh about uh here we go uh, about his pink fingernails uh, about all that kind of nails he's uh not really a fan of what some of you guys have been saying so he actually made a statement, and this is coming directly from Caleb Williams. So, uh, guys, uh, hide your kids, hide your wives, because Caleb Williams, uh, Caleb Williams, come in to town. Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your girl love them. <laughs> Nails are clear. Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your girl lips, love them. Lips are pink. Your girl love them. <laughs> Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your girl love them. <laughs> Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your girl love them. There you go. From the man himself, Caleb Williams is out here having a field day, uh, having a little fun, uh, joking around with people, and uh, letting you know, hey man, it's all good. Um, my 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 nails my nails are clear. My lips are pink, and your girl loves them. So. Uh, there you have it. Uh, that's the, by the way, guys, that's the kind of, look, I not telling you about his girls. Uh, he's not, you know, he's not, he's not coming for your girl. He's not any, any of that kind of stuff really. But the point to all of this is Caleb Williams is having fun. He's letting you know, look, this is the kind of guy who's taking some of you guys don't like him and that's okay. You don't have to like Caleb Williams, but some of you guys don't like him and you're just downright mean to him, right? You're just downright mean And, he is taking the high road in this context. And what he's saying to you guys is it's okay. You know what? Have your jokes. Uh, you know, my nails are clear right now. Uh, my lips are pink and your girlfriend, uh, she's on the clock. Cock, what, whatever she's on, you know, she's on it. Uh, so anyway, Caleb doesn't care what you think. Caleb's about to get paid. Uh, he's about to, and by the way, he makes more money right now than he's going to make in the NFL. Ironically. So I, I don't think that he really is that concerned. I think that uh, this is going to be a guy who this team is going to like. They're going to really like his attitude. Uh, the guy's having fun with it. He understands his uh, position. He, he understands who he is, what he means in this draft. Uh, so I think um, I, I think that, you know, this might be, you know, he's just kind of having fun with you guys. And if you don't like it, that's exactly what he's here for. Uh, also, on X, we got Coleman Shelton, who was, uh, this is a reminder here, just to give an, an idea, and, and as I come across these little nuggets here, I want to share them with you every day. Uh, Coleman Shelton ranked at 88.4 zone run blocking grade in 2023. That was third among all centers. So when people say Coleman Shelton's not this tremendous upgrade, et cetera, et cetera, then I do want to say, hey, listen, there are statistics here that will tell you whether or not he was or was not. And according to this, he was uh, the number three run blocker in all of uh, NFL last year. So as he gets playing time, as he subs in for Ryan Bates, as they say, make some moves around, then I think that we're going to see a really good rushing offense. And I think you guys should, um, I, I think that it's important to understand the Chicago Bears will be a running team. This is a better team as a running team. If Caleb Williams doesn't have to throw the ball a whole lot to start off with, if he doesn't have to, to come out here, like this team is not on his shoulders. This team is on the shoulders of the running offense. And we're going to have two tight end sets. We're going to have three tight end sets. We're going to have two receive, you know, you know, we're going to be running the ball a lot. And if we're running the ball a lot, that's better uh, to give Caleb Williams a chance to develop. And now we've got one of the best run blocking centers out here, even though he may not be the starter. Again, Ryan Bates is still plugged in as the starter for this moment. 
but Coleman Shelton could come in here, supplant him for that position in training camp. And then the next thing you know, uh, we have the, again, another year of the best running off rushing offense in the league. I mean, you never know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be very uh, interesting. I cannot wait. I, guys, I really can't wait for this season. Uh, I hope DeAndre Swift just has a, a, just a banger of a year. You know what I mean? Like, I really like to see um, uh, the, the rushing defense, uh, the rushing offense just continue. Also, um, we got one more here and that is this trio. This is their, they're, they're having a conversation about, you know, who are the, the, the guys, you know what I mean? And now we're talking about DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunsey. What would you think if that was how this was? Um, Lord Crimson says, do you really think our run game is going to be better? So let me, let me break it down for you as best I can to, to answer that. By the way, this was an idea that Roma Dunsey would be available at nine. And if he is that, you know, he becomes the guy to get. And if you get him, then you got this three, you got this this trio of monsters um, uh, in receiving. So, do you really think our run game is going to be better? I don't think that. Um, I, I think that DeAndre Swift is an upgrade for Deonta Foreman. I think that uh, Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson are still improving, and I think that that by virtue uh, of those two guys. And, and DeAndre Swift, I think that makes the rushing offense better. The question is, where do you get the 670 yards that Justin Fields ran for? You know, how do you replace that? And, you know, it should be noted that if we replace, um, if we replace, if we upgrade the offensive line, which we did, and we got, again, the number three path rush blocking, run blocking center in the league, if we're better, and Darnell Wright should be improved, Nate Davis, I mean, maybe Nate Davis is a little bit old, but uh, Tevin Jenkins continues to improve. Braxton Jones continues to improve, and now we have a better center. So are we going to be a better rushing team? Yes. Does Keenan Allen, uh, uh, it, Gerald Everett, Cole Komet are good run blockers. I mean, really across the board, the Bears should be a better rushing offense. The difference would be Caleb Williams not having those you know, not have Caleb Williams not going to run as much as Justin Fields. Caleb Williams going to look downfield, try to make passes. So, uh, could it be that we drop to number two or number three? Maybe, but I, I don't think that. I, I think that we're still going to be the running team that everybody look. We're going to be the Chicago Bears, and I think that we're designed to be the Chicago Bears right now. I think it's designed right now to be a a run heavy offense. To and by the way, you have to be a run heavy offense. You have to be able to run the ball if you want to bring in that rookie quarterback. That is part of the 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 build with defense and all that kind of stuff. So. We'll see how this works out, but I think that you know, and 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 Lord Crimson says it. It Swift looked good behind the best offensive line in the NFL, and it is true he did look good behind the best offensive line in the NFL. But he's going to look good behind a decent offensive line, and we are now a decent offensive line. When you look across the board, even if you have a problem with some of the positions, for example, if you don't like Braxton Jones at offensive tackle, he still grades out pretty well. If you don't like uh, Ryan Bates or Coleman Shelton, they still grade out pretty well, especially as run blockers. This is a run-heavy team, and if we continue to run the ball and we continue to do that, we're going to be just fine. Uh, and then there you go right there. That's what I would predict for Caleb Williams probably around 300 yards rushing for the season. I don't think he's going to be running for his life. You know what I mean? Um, and, and Swift, and yes, DeAndre Swift is a, a much better receiver out of the backfield, not than Roshan Johnson, by the way, Eric. Uh, Roshan Johnson had 41 catches. Uh, he he was probably as good as DeAndre Swift coming out of the backfield. Maybe not, a, maybe, maybe not in terms of elusiveness. And by the way, there is a lot of talk right now that Khalil Herbert could be moved and that Roshan Johnson becomes the de facto number two because he does, like DeAndre Swift, represent that guy who can make catches out of the backfield uh, and he can run the ball hard. So there, there is some uh, there is some some question right now about what happens there. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. But, um, again, Roma Dunsey, if he's available, are we taking him? And then uh, that wraps that up, and now we are back to uh, X, not going to give it to you now, uh, the lineup hasn't changed at all. We haven't made any moves, anything. Um, you know, we'll get the draft. If the thing in the draft, uh, if, if the thing in the draft kind of, you know, plays itself out to its best potential advantage, if you will, um, then, you know, maybe we make some changes to it. But for right now, here we are, you know, kind of sitting. Uh, Michael Dodson, here we go. He says, uh, Nate Davis will show up in shape and focused. 
He was preoccupied with dealing with his mother's illness last offseason, plus adding competition with Bates. Davis will be a better version of himself. And that's what I think, too. I think that, that, that but I don't. I think he's a little bit older. I don't think he's going to get remarkably better. But if he's more focused, I mean, guys, I really think that this is a, a, a going to be a great offense. I, I really think, um, you know what I mean? I I, I, I do like this team. Uh, offensively, I mean, just look at it. I mean, again, Braxton Jones, I think is going to be better. Ryan Bates is going to be decent. He's, I mean, everything is an upgrade here, just based on time served or the way that we're going to play. Everything about this offense gets me excited that we're probably going to be a really good team. Like, it, it really does. Uh, you've got DJ Moore. You've got Keenan Allen. You've got great wide receivers. Do you have deep wide receivers? No, but you have great wide receivers. Uh, do you have that third guy, Tyler Scott? I mean, maybe he comes around, and maybe he's that slot receiver that we needed. Maybe he's that long ball threat. Maybe he becomes that guy. If he does, that stretches the defense, and that means that they can't collapse and they can't run up on the pocket, um, uh, or they can't run up and they can't. Look, we're going to be stopping blitzes by being able to pass the ball further. You know what I mean? Like people are going to have to respect that passing game in a way that they haven't had to respect it before. And that's going to be virtu by virtue of having somebody like a Keenan Allen and a Gerald Everett on the field at the same time with DJ Moore and Cole Komet. This is going to be a more dynamic team. And DeAndre Swift, as your outlet guy on the screens, who will probably stay in and be an extra blocker for most of this. I mean, like this is a team that seems to be built around. I mean, if you look at this right now, this lineup right here is a, it looks like a fantastic rushing offense. Okay. This looks like a really good rushing team. Now you add in the dynamic of can Caleb Williams play at the NFL level and can he play well? Most people point to yes. So if he can, then this is going to be, uh, this, this is going to be one of those, this is an impressive, potentially impressive team. So, you know, when you look at this, um, it, you know, you still have questions, by the way. You can't answer all the questions, but I think we did a pretty decent job of filling in a lot of blanks. And I think Ryan Pohl's focus is going to be on new draft capital for next year after we get through this one. So let's get to my mock draft and you guys will see mine was as simple as it possibly gets. I made no trades down. I did nothing. I, I All I did was I took number one, number nine, number 75 and number 122. And I tried to address as much as I could. There's no way to get a, a I'm, not, I'm not confident at number 75 in an edge rusher as much as I am at a defensive tackle like Chris Jenkins. Um, and then at number 122, uh, I took the wide receiver. Again, I, I want Caleb Williams to be as comfortable as possible coming into the, the, the league. And I think that that represents the, the best opportunity. Number one, Caleb Williams. We take him at number one overall. Number nine, Joe Alt. We're not drafting down. We're taking the best offensive tackle. And again, going back to, to the, the 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 offensive line here, I'm just replacing Joe Alt and Braxton Jones here. And is that an upgrade? I think that it represents a potential upgrade. Will he be an upgrade immediately? Maybe he gets worked into the lineup. You know, it may not be that he's just better. He might need some time to, to improve. And if that is the case, then here we go. I mean, I do think that he's also, by the way, a phenomenal run blocker. So the the rushing game still doing pretty well. Then at number 75, you bring in Chris Jenkins. Uh, Gervon Dexter is the starter by default, uh, but Chris Jenkins represents a, a little bit of depth that we didn't previously have. And then at number 122, Brendan Rice. And Brendan Rice becomes a starter probably not on day one, but by day, you know, by the fourth game or the fifth game, you probably bring him in. You give him a lot of playing time because uh, Caleb Williams is familiar with him. Uh, they're familiar with one another in route running, and they probably would work fairly well together uh, to get to get started. And that gives you the slot receiver that that Tyler Scott hasn't been so far. I don't know if he won't. You know, maybe maybe he continues to improve and maybe he becomes. It. But uh, there we go. That's. Uh, it, I, I mean, I, I kept the draft pretty simple, uh, by the way, and then. Um, if you guys want, by the way, if you have your own draft, you can send it to me. Uh, my email is in the description down below. It's Tom nationwide at Gmail. <clears throat> you can check it out and send it over to me. And if I have time then I will do your draft, uh, live on the air. And then, uh, you know, you can decide whether, uh, you know, everybody can kind of vote on it. What do you guys think of this? Caleb Williams, Joe Alt, Chris Jenkins, and Brendan Rice, Lord Crimson. Did I win this draft or was, was this one one that, you know, I got to. Do I have to do better on this one, or or is this one good enough? Um, I guess that's the question right now. Caleb Williams, Joe Alt, 
uh, Chris Jenkins, Brendan Rice. I think we solved, I mean, basically we solved a lot of the problems with the Chicago Bears right now in pulling this out. Caleb Williams uh, being the obvious choice, of course. Then we got Joe Alt. We got that offensive tackle. And I know, by the way, Lord Crimson covets Joe Alt. Uh, so I, I think that that was, um, um, that, that's probably that guy. And then Chris Jenkins, I, I, again, I don't know if he ends up being a starter. Um, I don't know if he ends up being a starter, but you know, probably two years, three years in Gravon Dexter. Look, I think Gravon Dexter is probably a really good player. He continues to impress. So, uh, if he continues to get better, then, you know, we probably solved the problem. And Chris Jenkins is a, is a backup and a good backup at that. And then we have Brendan Rice. I don't know if Brendan Rice has an NFL future. I don't know. He's certainly, it's impossible. You know, Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't come along every day. And I'm not saying that that Brendan Rice is going to be like his dad, Jerry Rice. But, I mean, it is the same lineage. And, you know, there is some, you know, there, there is some certain possibility there. And Brendan Rice, by the way, um, looks to me like that guy that can just make Caleb Williams feel at home. Make him, you know, just make him feel good. So, um, I think that this represents a pretty good opportunity and a pretty good potential, if you will, for uh, for this team. So uh, there we go, guys. We did it. We, we we got through all of the news. I mean, there's little pieces of news, by the way, that that, you know, just speculative stuff. There's nothing really new. We're all keeping it quiet, close to the vest right now, because this is the draft. This is the time when everybody gets shh, super quiet because nobody wants to know. Uh, what's going on in the background? Nobody, you know, nobody wants that uh, uh, smoke, if you will. So um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you all. Have a great day. And uh, we will talk to you again very, very soon. Um, and uh, if you haven't already, uh, consider uh, right here, consider signing up for NordVPN for your privacy, security and protection. Uh, that is a sponsor of my other channel. Uh, but I just kind of brought them over here and they agreed to allow me to um, sign you guys up as well. So uh, if you haven't, it's like a uh, $3.99 a month, $4.99 a month. And then the first 90 days are free, by the way. Uh, so you can do this on a trial if you want to make sure. Uh, and just so you guys know, I lost $50,000. I got scammed um, on cryptocurrency and I lost 50 grand uh, in, in January of this year. And it was because I turned off my NordVPN. I turned off my NordVPN uh, when I moved uh, locations. Uh, I moved my studio uh, from where it was to where it is now. And when I moved that, I turned off NordVPN because it was messing with the modem. Uh, and, and I was getting this weird sort of error. And then, boom, next thing you know, I got robbed of 50 grand. So uh, I, I you guys definitely use NordVPN if you haven't already for privacy, security, and protection. It is so important to make sure that you stay anonymous when you are online so that people cannot target you and find you. I can't stress how important that is. Even if you don't see it today, you will see it one day um, when you get that notice that you're information has been compromised somewhere. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in guys. And we will talk to you again tomorrow.